Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation on our paper Determining the Origin of Impulsive Noise Events Using Paired Wireless Sound Sensors. My name is Yunur B and will be presenting the work on behalf of first author Fabian Nemasi. First, some acknowledgments. The machine learning work is done primarily by Fabian Nemasi, who wrote a master thesis on this topic, linked below. Data collection was done by Erik Schörlen and Uli Johan Astrosan Bjerke at SoundSensing. The noise propagation tests were led by Lars R. Nordin at Brekostrand. And the project was funded in collaboration between Politiets National Center and SoundSensing. And in this period, SoundSensing also received funding from the Norwegian Research Council. The work considers a general method which is tested out in a real-world case study. And this case is Politiets Nationalbildetsopcenter in Norway, or PNB for short. PNB is a combined training facility and operative base for the police special forces. It is located in close proximity to Oslo Center and the surrounding urban area to ensure quick response times. It has an outdoor shooting ranges for Firearm training, shown in orange, three in total, and training facilities for explosives, shown in red. At around 1.2 kilometers to the west and to the north, there are residential areas, which is relatively close for this kind of facility. So a large amount of resources and effort has been put into ensuring that the noise impact is minimal. This includes careful design of the shooting ranges, and the construction of large earth walls and noise barriers. The CIDR operator also wants to be able to log the activity that can potentially create noise from the site. The facility also has a helicopter landing pad, but helicopter noise was not included in our project, as it was considered well monitored through the aviation logbooks. In a prior work presented at ICSV 27 this year, we describe the automatic detection of noise events at the source, which has uh, been a system that's running at the site since the second half of 2021. The sensors automatically detect uh, noise events and report it as an activity log shown on the right, which is used to manage compliance with time of day activity restrictions and to handle requests for information from the public. In this work, we have considered a complementary problem of understanding how noise events from the site may affect the surrounding residential areas. If one were to measure sound levels at the residential areas, noise events are bound to happen. But this does not mean that these originate from our source of interest, the training site. It could be other sources in the area, such as children playing ball, construction work, traffic, etc. So the problem statement is, given that there is noise experienced at the receiver, does it originate from our source, A, or from other background sources, such as B? And we want a system that can perform this task automatically and continuously. So our proposed system architecture is a wireless acoustic sensor network that is set up as follows. One source is in one sensor is installed at the source of interest, and another sensor is installed at the receiver location of interest. The sensors operate independently and transmit data to a server. To be privacy compatible, the data transmitted is a low resolution spectrogram, which has been shown by Gontier et al. to not have intelligible speech. The two streams of spectrogram data is then fed into a trained model which for each time period classifies the likelihood that it contains noticeable noise events that originate from the source of interest. In order to test the proposed system, we collected data at the PMB site. At the time of data collection, the site was in the last stages of construction, so not yet operational. The data was collected during tests performed for noise abatement verification. In total, 10 audio recorders were set up, 5 on site and 5 in the terrain towards the residential areas. 
However, in this paper, only data from one sensor on site and one sensor closest to the residential area were used. These are shown in red and orange circles, respectively. Data was recorded on four separate days, two days with the worst case sound propagation towards the north and two days towards the west. west. The test activities followed Norwegian guidelines on testing of shooting ranges, which has controlled firing of a series of single events, each event being 30 seconds apart. 64 such series were performed in total across five locations and 10 or more weapon types for a total of 510 events. Focus was kept on the most noisy configurations and directions. After all the data was collected, it was labeled precisely. Audio from the different devices were, was time aligned and the time of each noise event was marked and verified. At the receiver locations, each event was manually labeled for how noticeable it was. This is a challenging task because it's highly subjective and also contextual. Here we followed a very simplified protocol where a person would listen on a headset assisted by the visuals from the spectrogram and a known annotated time of the noise event. We classified it into three levels, not heard, faint and clear, where faint means that it can only be noticed while concentrating. In an everyday scenario on site, we don't think that faint would be noticeable. So here we have considered only clear to be a noise event. The proposed model for solving the task looks like this. The spectrograms are split into 26 second windows with 50% overlap. Each window is split into shorter one second sub windows and each sub window is classified independently by a convolutional neural network. The CNN acts as a binary classifier that detects the presence of a noise event in this one second period. CNN architecture can be shown on the right, which is a simple two convolutional layers followed by two fully connected layers. The maximum of all the predictions from the entire window is taken as the output from one side of the model. And if the Predictions from both the source and the receiver side are sufficiently high. This is considered to be a noticeable noise event that has originated from this source. The training and evaluation was as follows. The CNN detector models were trained independently using only data from its own location. So they have the same architecture but different learned weights. Uh, some variations on the CNN models also got the delta of a spectrogram as an input, which can help a bit with short impulsive sounds. Data sets were split uh, based on the firing series, because events inside the same series are very similar. Mixing them would be a clear violation of independence. The windows were created with up to plus minus 10% of misalignment to simulate the clock drift. At the source, the CNN the event detectors perform well, reaching 90% average precision. The task here is in general quite easy with high signal to noise ratio, but some events like low caliber weapons or training flashbangs can be hard to detect. At the receiver it's a different story with the best model only reaching 69% average precision. Note that the variability here between faults is very high at 23 percentage points. This is likely due to the small amount of data and large diversity, causing significant data differences between the folds. A larger data set here would probably make this performance more clear. Models were then uh, combined together into the combined model. We used two different variations called bundle one and bundle two. These have the same CNN detector at the source, but differ in the CNN detector used at the receiver. Bundle 1 has a model with only male spectrogram, and Bundle 2 includes one delta spectrogram. The best model reached 79% F1 score. And at a recall of 80%, the precision is approximately 70%. At a recall of 90%, the precision is approximately 55%. 
This shows that the model is able to solve the task to a certain degree. So for automated use, we would like to have the precision and recall be both above 90%. So more work is needed. In summary, we proposed a method for determining the origin of impulsive noise events. Using two wireless acoustic sensor nodes, one at a source location and the other at the receiver location. Transmitting privacy compatible spectrograms to a server and then using convolutional neural networks to detect events on each stream. The two streams of predictions are combined in order to classify the origin of the noise to either be the known from the known source or from another source. The method was tested using data from a shooting range where the source receiver distance was approximately one kilometer. 510 noise events were introduced in controlled conditions and the method reached F1 scores up to 79%. We have identified further work to improve the model performance, to collect a significant amount of new data from normal operations, and to reduce the window size from 26 seconds to approximately 4 seconds, and to train the entire model in a combined fashion instead of training the event detectors independently. We've been tasked to estimate the percentage of noise events that can be heard in the residential areas around the site. And we wish to test the model out for semi-automatic labeling of these events and then verify uh, with human uh, checking. We're also looking to test out this technology on more use cases, as we believe the approach can be very useful for industrial noise, harbors, construction noise, and traffic, and potentially more cases. So if you have a noise monitoring challenge that could benefit from automatic event detection, please get in touch. Thank you.